So the communication really started to lapse and then the quality started to lapse. It was just too much. I can't do that for my own company. I can't do that for my customers. And that's not the full story. Oh yeah, it gets worse. I just can't put up with it anymore. But for now, it's my reputation on the line and I'm not gonna have it tarnished with them. Well, I recently had to make the tough decision to cancel one of the brands that I've worked with for a very long time probably one of the first brands that I started working with once I actually became an official company. But I didn't take this decision lightly. There was a lot that went into it, a lot of reasons behind it. I'm gonna go through all that now, but the plus side is you are gonna have a fire sale opportunity coming up. You're gonna wanna check the website, check the links down below, see how much you can save as we clear out this inventory. Now one company I am still partnering with and proud to be sponsored by is Bora Wheel Spacers. They offer a made in America product with a lifetime warranty. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, side to side especially wheel spacers can make a big difference i'd encourage you to check out the links down below so this company i do business with year round we do a lot of snow equipment with them we do a lot of summertime equipment you know grapples tillers snow plows all sorts of products that we've worked with them on over the years new products that they've had come out however i just canceled my spring order of 90 grapples that i have with them i just can't put up with it anymore and so this company hasn't been failing me in just one area, it's been multiple areas. And you know I've talked about the trifecta before, which is a good mix of product features, product quality, and pricing. And so all of that has to come together in order to be a good product that I wanna sell and share with you. It's something I would use myself, and I need to be comfortable recommending it for my customers too. Now all that kind of stuff is from me to you and the kind of product and the kind of relationship and reputation that uh, you and I are gonna have as I sell you product. However, on the backside, it's me and a manufacturer or a distributor having that same kind of relationship, which all boils down to communication and dependability. Now again, I've been doing business with this company for a long time, and so one of my big pain points with them has always been their delivery times, all right? So every year when I would order tillers in the spring, they never seemed to show up in February or March. It was always late April, May, or June, which is a big problem, right? Planting season happens around that time, so we need to be able to have the equipment here, get it shipped out, have customers be able to have it in time to set it up and use it when planting season comes around. So after the first year or two of this happening, I just started to order equipment earlier and earlier with them. I kind of saw a pattern and it wasn't that it wasn't a really good product, uh, that I didn't enjoy getting it and it wasn't very popular, all that other kind of stuff, but this kind of equipment needs to come in at a certain time, otherwise, the ship has sailed, I've missed my sales window, and I might have to wait until the next season or just let it slowly trickle out instead of getting the bulk of the sales right then. And so the pandemic has really compounded this problem and no manufacturer is immune to that and I understand that and I've been very patient with this. However, I can give you a lot of examples with just this one manufacturer and it really at some point comes down to the inability to have real, reliable, dependable communication directly from the manufacturer itself. And so I pre-sell a lot of this equipment and if I can't give an expected date of when it's gonna show up, how am I supposed to pre-sell it? You know, if I can say, you can order it now, but I have no idea when it's gonna be here, well, some people may be okay with that, just wanna get that tiller whenever it shows up, but a lot of guys, they need it for a certain period of time, and if they can't get it then, they have to find another solution, or wait until next year, or go somewhere else. So those tillers didn't end up showing until mid to late May, some point around there, and a lot of the planting season had already passed. You know, by the time that we could get product here, pack it up, ship it out, they could assemble it and use it. The same thing happened with cedars or planters this year. We actually didn't get any of them. I was able to scavenge one for a customer that still wanted it. He got it four months after when we thought it would be here. The same thing also happened with our grapple order this year. We had some of them come in in June, some more in July, some more in August, but everything was supposed to be here early in the spring to take advantage of the entire season as people start to plan their projects. And probably the biggest blunder of them all was my snowplow order. I placed it last March and was told they would be here in August. So way before snow season came around. And so for this order in particular, I was following up on a constant basis, like every two weeks, hey, how are these plows coming along? How are they coming along? Are we gonna get them? Are they on schedule? And time and time again, my distributor went to the manufacturer, verified, yep, everything's on track. However, by mid-August, we had not seen the plows yet, reached out for another update, wondering what's going on. They gotta be here any day now, and was told at that point, it was gonna be November, December, January, maybe even later before we'd see any plows. So that really rubbed me the wrong way and was really the straw that broke the camel's back. I was already kind of considering, should I, should I drop them? Should I, should I leave them? And then when we finally got the plows in that November, December timeframe, well, that was a whole other story. So when late November and early December rolled around, we finally started to get some plows in. 
Mind you, we never got our full order of plows that we placed, but some of them started to show up so we could at least start to send out customer orders that still wanted to get a plow. But what we found out was that they shorted us on edges, right? Steel edges, rubber edges, so we didn't have enough to fill all those orders right then. They also didn't send us any hydraulic kits for hydraulic angling purposes for the snow plows. So basically they sent us incomplete units. How are we supposed to fulfill customer orders with incomplete units? And this boils down to communication, right? If we would have known this months in advance, at least weeks in advance, we could start to make other plans and try to find uh, different vendors, different ways to secure these parts and pieces to make the units whole. However, we had to find out after the fact, and at this point, they had no idea when they could send us edges, they had no idea when they could send us uh, hydraulic kits, so we had to go out and source hydraulic kits ourselves. We have a local fabricator actually still right now that's working on putting together these hydraulic kits so that we can send them out to customers separately, which is gonna cost us more money. And yet, it still gets worse. And so after we started sending out plows to customers, they were getting them, starting to hook them up, try to use them, that kind of thing, we started to have a lot of fitment issues or problems with fabrication and manufacturing. And these were issues I really hadn't had at all prior to the year 2021. And so for the John Deere Quick Attach, we started to have pin fitment issues with one pin not fitting on one side of the bracket and fit fine on the other side. We had one plow that was just welded up kitty wampus so it would not sit flat on the ground. We also had a plow that was completely missing one of the brackets for the hydraulic cylinder. Now we run our company pretty lean so I don't have all sorts of guys just sitting around waiting to answer the phone, to follow up on things, to, to handle customer issues all the time. We just typically don't have a lot of issues. And so this one manufacturer was just creating such a huge headache. Not only did we have unreliable delivery times on when product was going to show up, they failed to communicate. When the product did show up we had to go out and seek solutions to to make it a complete product because parts and pieces were missing. And then when we actually shipped the product out to the customers, we had more issues than we ever had ever in the history of working with them. And so it was that point after the third return, we only ended up getting about 30 plows that we were able to ship out to customers, which was just a fraction of our order. And it was a very high, over a 10% failure rate or, or defect rate. And so that was it for me, right? I just could not do it anymore. It was one thing to have the delivery issues, right? I'd kind of worked through that and expected it over the years, but then the delivery lag was, well, you go from August to November, December without saying anything until the month it's supposed to arrive, and then it's gonna be three or four months later, that's a big deal, right? So the communication really started to lapse, and then the quality started to lapse. It was just too much. I can't do that for my own company. I can't do that for my customers. And as good of a perceived value as they were, you know, with really good features, historically really good quality, and a good price point, it's just not worth it anymore. Now I wanna be very clear, the point of this video is not to bash this company, this manufacturer. You know, everybody, you know, whether it's a business or a person can go through rough patches, and it doesn't mean that what's going on now is gonna be the way that their business is conducted in the future, and perhaps we can re-engage, and once they kinda of get their, their things worked out and smoothed out, we can go back to doing business. But for now, it's my reputation on the line and I'm not gonna have it tarnished with them. So the reason I made this video is because I've done a lot of videos about this company in the past and they're all over my website and a lot of folks have seen those products and had those products and are gonna ask questions. And so I wanna put this out there so you know where I stand and just have that transparency between us. So with all that said, we do still have some products on hand that haven't completely sold out yet. So I'm going to discount those, mark those down. And even with the failures or the, the defects, the warranty claims that we've had, Overall, it's still been very minimal compared to um, all the good units that are out there, right? It's still probably 95% on average overall of, of really good quality units that don't have any issues, but that defect rate is creeping up and they are doing a good job covering it under warranty. I'm not gonna discount that either, but it's not like I'm just out here selling junk, right? So if there's still a problem, even though it's discounted, it still comes with a full warranty, I will still help you out, the manufacturer will still help you out. That's not what this is about either. And so we still have some grapples, we still have some tillers from these guys, we still have some land planes as well. And these are the kind of products that if we would have had them early in the spring, like we should have, then they would have all sold out. But since we missed a huge chunk of that sales opportunity, that sales window there in the spring season, we're still sitting on a lot of that equipment, which is frustrating every time I go through and look at it. So I try to put a positive spin on everything, right? So for you, you can get some additional savings if you're lucky enough to snag one of these. But also for me, I am trying to shift away from made in China products. And that's a lot easier said than done. And I still do carry some products that are made in China. And there's going to be a lot of products that are, well, you're going to see them labeled made in the USA with 
U.S. and imported parts. A lot of the gearboxes for tillers and brush hogs and, and other components do come out of China. So I'm using this as an opportunity to shift a little quicker to more of the made in the USA or made in North America or at least not made in China products. All right, I know you guys have been patiently waiting, wanting to find out who I'm talking about. If you haven't connected the dots by now, we're talking about, oh, I know you want to know who it is. But first, if you have not subscribed to my channel for some reason, some crazy reason, take a moment right now, hit that subscribe button down below to follow along and see future videos. And if you're watching this video, you probably own a tractor and you probably need tractor attachments. Well, we can help with that. Visit goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country all the time. So check us out, goodworkstractors.com. All right, enough about that. Let's find out who we're talking about. We're talking about Tar River, okay? And we use them for some of our grapples, for our snow plows, for a lot of our smaller tillers, for cedars, for land planes a lot of different equipment. And so fortunately, we do have some other manufacturers that we started transitioning with already to give different options. However, for our 48 inch tillers, that was one of the gaps in the lineup that Tar River was the only manufacturer that we had. But this year, we're gonna be introducing ideal farm equipment for their tillers, their smaller 48, and maybe some of their 60 inch tillers as well that are a little bit more light duty for smaller subcompacts and compact tractors. We're still gonna carry Dirt Dog for the 60, the 72, the 84 inch tillers, which those things are built like tanks. There's probably nobody out there that could do anything Thing to destroy those. But take a look for the ideal farm equipment 48 inch tillers that are going to be coming in soon. We already got a couple of them just to get some um, video done, some pictures, that kind of thing too. So more of those coming. As far as grapples go, we have a lot of other manufacturers that are already in our lineup there. WorkSaver has a lot of good options. HLA, uh, Westendorf with the Brush Crusher. And then we also recently kind of did a soft introduction to precision manufacturing. We are working with them. We are not going to stock their product, but you can order it right through us and we're going to put their order into the factory. And when it's ready, they're going to ship it right to you. As as far as snow plows go, this is going to be a big switch for us. We use HLA right now for our snow pushers, and they do have really well-built snow plows, but we're trying to get some pricing details worked out there, but I think we're going to transition over to HLA snow plows as well. I'm hoping to snag a couple of those still this winter so I can play around with them a little bit more, maybe get some video, capture some pictures, that kind of thing, and get set up well for next year. As far as land planes go, we actually switched over to Dirt Dog essentially for all of our land planes and most of our three-point kind of basic equipment as well. They are a made in America company down in Georgia. They make some really high quality stuff, really good pricing. Again, this is the whole trifecta, right? Features, quality, and pricing, it all comes together with Dirt Dog. But as far as the cedars or the planters go, I'm really struggling with this one. Tar River had a very affordable, economical, more residential grade cedar or planter. If you guys have looked into those at all, you know the cost can go well north of $10,000 before you even blink an eye. So I've had a really tough time finding something cheaper. If you guys know of a solution out there, I would love to hear about it. Okay, so there you go, folks. If you have questions about why we're dropping Tar River or what happened to them, where'd they go, why don't you see them? This hopefully answers those questions for you. Again, we've done some other business related videos. I'm trying to incorporate a little bit more of that to just relate, you know, a lot of you guys are business owners out there, you wanna get into business, it's not without its challenges, and this is one of them. So if you did enjoy this video, we have hundreds more videos for you to check out. Just peruse our catalog online, there are all sorts of projects, overviews, comparisons, you name it, we got it. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.